Hi, I'm Andrew Harvey, and this is the fifth and the final video in the series on creating and drawing tags in VT SCADA versions 11 and 11.1. .1. In the last video, we drew the animated widgets and linked those to the tags for motor number one. But we also still have three more motors to draw. Now, just as I showed you in an earlier video, that it's more efficient to create a motor context that includes all of the tags within a motor, similar idea can be used when drawing the widgets for all of those I.O. for a motor. Now, I'm going to show you several different methods that you can use, and you can choose which is the most efficient for your situation. So let's take a look at your choices. Since finishing the last video, I've done two things to make this one a little bit uh, more efficient. One is that I added a label above the widgets that we drew in the last uh, exercise, and I also added one control page. Now, this is a pop-up page. It has nothing in it, but it will save us some time when we get to this part of the example of drawing things. Now, on the screen are the four widgets that I've drawn for the four IO tag, or the three IO tags in the uh, first motor. I now need to repeat these for the remaining three motors. Now, I could simply draw everything all over again each time for all three of the motors, but that's not a very appealing choice. So my next option is that I could highlight everything that's here, I can do a copy, and I could do a paste. Bring those over, and now all I need to do is change the link for each object from motor one down to motor two. All right, now that will work, but it's still going to take some time, and there's a chance of forgetting to choose one of the objects. The next thing I could do is to make use of a feature that's built into the Idea Studio called the Tag Links panel. I've gone to the Home menu, or Home ribbon, in the Idea Studio. The Tag Links uh, option is right here beside the palettes, and this gives me a list of all of the tags currently drawn on this uh, page. Now, this will be slightly different depending on whether you're in 11.0 or 11.1. In 11.1, .1, the tag links only include currently selected widgets on the page. In 11.1, .1, this includes every widget, whether you've selected it or not. Now, as I go through and click on widgets, I can see on the screen which one I'm pointing at. I could then use this button to go in and make a change of which, uh, which particular tag this widget is linked to. Now, that's not too bad, but a search and replace is even faster. Now, with version 11.1, .1, where the only items in the list are the ones you've selected, search and replace is fairly quick and efficient. But since in 11.1 .1 we have everything there, this is really meant to be used when you're working on another page. So for example, if I were drawing each motor on its own control page, then I would do my paste operation to bring this uh, motor in. And now all I need to do is open up my search and replace. Now I notice that the only difference in the name is that I need to change motor one to motor two. So I can search for any instance of a one change that to a 2, it found all of the widgets on the screen, and in a few clicks, I've made my, uh, my search and replace work. All I need to do now is right-click, clone this page, and repeat, repeat, repeat. All right, now that was an improvement on simply copy, paste, and change one link at a time, but I still have more efficient methods available. Let me go back to my overview page. I'm going to erase these objects. And if I take a look at these original widgets and select them, what I can do is group them and group them into a brand new widget for motors. This is very similar to what we did earlier where we created a context tag for a motor and all of the I.O. were within that. I'm going to create a new widget that shows me all of the component widgets that make up a motor. So I click on New Widget, and I'm going to call this my uh, Motor Control Widget. 
Now, a habit that I have gotten into is I always put some word in the name that identifies to me that this is a widget that I'm talking about. Now, that might be the word widget at the end of the name, or often what I like to do is put a W at the beginning. The reason I do this is that I personally find it very easy to get confused. So if I've got an indicator in the name that tells me what kind of a thing this is, I'm less likely to get confused later on about whether I'm talking about a widget or a page. Now, I've got a choice of a new widget or a new tag widget. The difference is this. If it's simply a new widget, then there's no link available to any particular tag. Now, that might be useful if I've got a group of um, images or shapes, but we're talking about tags, and therefore, a tag widget is far more appropriate. This I can now link to tags. And note that I've got a choice of which tag I link to, but only one. Rather than trying to link every component to individual tags, I simply need to choose the parent context and then VTSCADA will take care of all the child tags and all of the component widgets automatically. So I choose the context motor one, click OK, everything blinks, and now what I have is a brand new widget in my list. If I scroll down to the list of widgets, there it is. So I can now click, uh, well, I don't know if I click, I drag drop it on the screen, and now what I need to do is to right-click and link, but I don't have to go digging for individual I.O. within the motor. I'm simply going to link this to motor number two. Now when I hover over this, I can see that, well, well, I can see in my tag links window, I've got one widget linked to motor one, one linked to motor two. Now a couple of other things just for housekeeping. Close this quickly, open the page. Now, you may have discovered earlier that if you click on a tag, you get a trend view of the, uh, the history of that tag. The entire widget also counts. If I were to click on one of these buttons, I would turn the motor on, but I would also open up a trend view for the overall motor itself that's not necessarily going to be appropriate. In fact, it's kind of in the way. So what I want to do very first is go back to my Idea Studio, and for this instance of the widget, I'm going to go into its properties, and I'm going to disable the trend, and I'm also going to disable the right-click navigation window. And that is something I will need to do for each instance of the overall group widget. The advantage is now that when I click on a button, I simply operate the button. I don't open up a trend view for the entire thing. But if I do click on a status tag, I still get the trend view just for that status tag. So this is going to work a bit more efficiently the way I want it to. Now, one more feature that having everything inside of its own tag widget gives me, notice that the title, Motor 1 for Motor 2, well, that's not very good. Let's go back and we'll add just a tiny bit of programming to make this automatically update itself to be what I want it to say. It'll be the name of the specific instance of the motor. Now I can edit the definition of the widget by right-clicking on either one of these, click the word edit, and this opens up the widget itself as its own page in the Idea Studio. And here I can make changes to the overall construction of what I see within this widget. First off, I'm going to get rid of the yellow tag icon marker because I don't want to use it at this time in this widget. Note that back on the screen, they both disappeared. The second is this piece of text. The text at the moment simply says motor one, but I can go into its properties and I can change it from being just hardwired text to be a property of the linked tag. I can then go into this drop-down list and I can open up the linked tag and I can look at any of the parameters available and make the text match the area, the name, or the short name. Having done that, 
I can see that here it still says motor one, but over here, the second instance, automatically updates to be motor two. Okay, that took no code at all, but with just a little bit of configuration, I now have something that's general purpose. All right, there's still other methods available, but what I've just shown you are probably the most efficient of your available choices. That completes the series. Now we've got tags from creation to showing up on the screen, ready to go. Well, that completes the series on creating and drawing tags from start to finish in VT SCADA versions 11 and 11.1. .1. Now, there's still quite a bit more to learn about. So to go from here, you've got several choices. There's the online help. There's going to be another series of videos, which you can look at in any order, but I'll take an in-depth view at all of the different concepts and many other concepts besides. You can also go to our website and there you'll find both the documentation and you can download the training materials and run through the training course at your own speed. And who knows, maybe someday I'll see you in one of my classes.